Hey. Hey, hello and welcome to Up at Noon Live at 5 p.m. Pacific Time. Uh, there's a lot of numbers and titles and times and all of that, uh, and a lot of it demands your attention. But if you're here, we want to say thank you for being there. Uh, I'm Brian Altano, and with me is Max Scoville. Hey, what's up, man? Hey, how you doing? I haven't seen you in like a very long time. It's weird. I'm used to Didn't seeing we, you all day. Yeah, no, we we used to spend all the time together, and now it's like we have like I look forward to having like Skype calls with you. You know, like having yeah. stupid meetings and work stuff, but. I guess this is sort of work stuff, kind of, a little bit. You know what I love about this? Honestly, I don't have to stand on a small box when I make videos with you now because you're not tall anymore. You're just a, a little square like everybody else. Look at you. Ow, just a little, ouch. Just a yeah, no, that's, little that's, that's true. Yeah, that's fair. That's very fair. <laughs> yep. Yeah. yeah. So, Nobody on the internet cares how tall you are. It doesn't matter. No, it doesn't. I mean, unless you're on a dating app. Yeah, but even then, if you're just on a dating app, what are you going to do about that? Like you, you actually, actually look, you, you look taller than me right now because of how the cameras are set up. I look like I look like a little boy. I actually have been uh, getting taller since um, you've seen me, so it's been good. I can't, I can't prove you wrong. I cannot. Yeah, I cannot <laughs> doubt that. So great. Also, great a fun work. trick you can do if you're on a dating website and you're a short man is you can go into Photoshop and take your picture and you stretch it real, real long, and then the ladies will love you. They're gonna love it. Yeah. We're going to have a great time. Anyway, we have a very good show lineup for you for today. None of that was planned earlier, so we're going to get through all that. Uh, what is the show, Brian? Let's explain the show to anybody who maybe is just dropping in. This show is a weekly comedy variety show where we recap uh, some of the slightly more offbeat stories uh, in the news, uh, in pop culture and entertainment. Not really like the news, but like the, are the news, you know? Um, uh -huh. A lot of the stuff that IGN uh, either doesn't want to touch or pretends doesn't exist or doesn't want to go anywhere near, and so they put they put it out. They give it to us. But to what, we what we make wants. is what we make is more fun than the regular news and the actual stuff. Like I like to think of what we do here as we are the hot dogs. Like we are we are all of the leftover bits and pieces they don't want to deal with, and we just put them oh. into something that is fun, and everyone goes and eats it outside at the fair. Like this is we are hot. We are we're made of garbage, but it's more fun. I like hot that because you can't you can't go out and eat hot dogs at the fair anymore. So. Um, you can go on the street and eat hot dogs. It's still legal, probably. Can't eat hot but dogs that, with a mask. Uh, that's a fair point. A fair point there. I mean, anyway, you could, you, could, you could shove a couple of dogs in the sides. You probably do that. Get a special mask with a little zipper on it. Go for run. Run, 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 run. Anyway, um, the biggest story this week, obviously, PlayStation Five Dual Sense controller was revealed um, in a, a dramatic sixty-minute press conference video. Uh, a huge countdown clock. Um, this is next gen is here, and no, I'm just kidding. This was uh, just a tweet that they put up on like a can we uh, just, an afternoon. Can we give them a shout out for just for not even putting out three pictures, but literally two, like two and a half? Not it's even like, a video. No, no, no. It was like here's the front of it. Here's the sort of back side of it. Here's the front of it, but it's cropped to the side. So it's just the same front of it, but just it, the corners cut off. Dude, the, the Ronco rotisserie grill has a 30-minute infomercial that runs every night. <laughs> we have two photos of the PS5 controller. Here, wait, no, um, they, we, have, we have two and a half. But let's, here, I have them right here if anybody missed okay. it somehow. Here's what, here it is. That, that's, I've got it up here, and it's just... Uh -huh. And there's the other one. Yeah, and then there's a little bit more of the. That's like it's like trying to see if that's the camera's the same, working. No, it's the same as the first photo. That you no, it's getting it's getting slow, slowly closer. It's like, but that's the same picture. Like yeah, if I like if I put my hand here and I put my hand here, you can't be like, oh, that's a different hand. It's the same hand. Yeah. Anyway, it's a, we got a new PlayStation <laughs> controller picture. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, people immediately rushed to uh, do a variety of things on this. They either dunked on it because it looks like it's wearing a dress or a bikini or a bathing suit. Um, they compared it to the Xbox controller because, you know, uh, it's sort of uh, about as sort of chunky. I don't want to put my hands in the air and say chunky ever again, but I just did it. Um, or they Photoshopped the hell out of it and made a bunch of different color schemes, uh, which uh, you and I were also guilty of joining in on. Yeah, um, we have some special ones. Some, really of them, fun. some of those we've shown off before. Some of them we will be debuting World class exclusive first first appearance here on Up at Noon. I'm sure people are very excited to see what we think about this thing that we should have posted on Twitter four days ago, but instead we save for our like 5 p.m. on a Friday live show. Here's one. This yeah. is really good. I like this. I did the exact same one, but sort of different. We'll be showing that very shortly. <laughs> but anyway, there's a whole article up on IGN. It's basically just a roundup of this. Um, I know it's always weird to be like stealing things on the internet. Like here's someone else's joke, but here, just to take a look, here's the stuff everyone's doing. And then at the very bottom, 
there's some things made from from us. We've got some some pictures of sort of other people's jokes, and then there's I think they threw a couple of ours in here. But I do have actual beautiful big old photos of the, the stuff that we made. That's right. Pull those uh, up in a second. And so we we realize an interesting thing is that there's a there's a there's a lot of parts on this controller that could you know potentially be customized. Um, and so it's it's very different than say you know like the Wii U Pro Control, which just feels like one big solid thing or the switch pro controller um if you look at it like it's 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 following this pattern that sony's been following for a while now with their color controllers where it's sort of duo toned um you and i are always complaining on podcast beyond about like they do a lot of controllers that like the back is like a solid color but the front is translucent and it's like that's missing the point of of a translucent controller what are your two favorite colors together you ever get that Clear- question yeah right <laughs> <laughs> clear and not clear i like that now if you like get a custom one of these i mean if we ever get that opportunity i feel like we're not going to but it's like hey cool i got a ps4 controller my favorite color and you hold it up and someone's like your favorite color is is uh, beige and it's like no no the other color because you can never just have one color thing and why would that anyway we made a bunch of very silly images of things that we would like to see this controller turned into and i figure we could share those right now let's do it all right. So first things first, the obvious one, the most obvious thing in the world, the, the original PlayStation just turned, celebrated its, its what, like 20, 25th anniversary? And uh, sure enough, we want to see that. We want to see that nasty little beige thing with the different mm-hmm. mono, multicolored buttons. I love that this is just a barely a step up from like office equipment in the 80s, you know? It was just like, let's have beige, but a little bit of color. A little bit of color is a treat. You can have fun with that. Yeah, and, then, and this con- this controller also did like what, kind of what the Super Nintendo con- controller did, where like it was a different color a year or two after you bought it. Like it just sort of it it smoked yeah. at night. Yeah, no, I think honestly, those a lot of a lot of electronics in the '90s just smoked cigarettes when no one was looking. It's like a that's yeah. a different that's a different Pixar movie I'd like to see. But anyway, <laughs> things got dark in the in the 2000s. Literally, everything switched from being beige to being like glossy black, and so that's an obvious one. And it was a really easy Photoshop, so I did it. What um, I like about these uh, is that you brought you brought back the color buttons, which uh, the Dual Sense is missing. And I'm kind of pissed about that, honestly. Like it's just yeah, it's too. not even like I'm not. I know that Sony won't get super wacky, but like, come on, like people have like that just that little bit of nostalgia. Just just have some fun with it. Just get a little bit playful. It's also just such a cool palette right there. Anyway, then of course we could also get into like the really colorful stuff. I feel like this is going to be like a third party. Uh, like laminate decal that you have to buy from some like really shady guy on Twitter, and he mails you yeah. this thing, and you just like put it. And yeah. You get, yeah, but it's or still, it'll like, be like you know. it'll be airbrushed, and you could buy it at PAX. You know, yeah, like one of those things. Yeah, um, I made this one. We're gonna get Last of Us two, and inevitably that's gonna be on a. It's gonna be on the PS five at some point. So I made this. I'm actually really proud with this. I think I spent probably too much time on this. But you got the you got the Firefly graffiti there, and then I put lots of grass everywhere, you know, because mm-hmm. there's grass everywhere in The Last of Us. You got boards. In, you can't, what, that's what fungus. Is, that in the lower, is it? Yeah, it's fungus. I try to find a really good picture of like the cordyceps, but there aren't any really clear good ones that I could find. I just said screw it. So that's the, there's it, mine. It looks like it looks like oysters. They kind of do look like they look like nasty like dry sh- sh- shellfish. So yeah, that's my that's one of my ideas. Moving on, this is another obvious one, sort of. Someone else did like almost the exact same thing, but doesn't have like the dumb fur and b- bands on it that I put on there. <laughs> I feel like I got like I, I went somewhere between like believably like believably like on brand, but also just a tiny bit too dumb. Did, you know, were you trying to recreate Kratos's body? I think I started that way, and then just like, and and then and then just sort of forgot what I was doing, and I was like on Google Images being like. High res bear rug PNG file. Like, <laughs> I like if somebody's like, "Oh, what button do I have to do to to beat to beat the level?" And you're like, "Oh, press uh, press the two triangles kissing." Yeah, this would never happen in a million years, specifically because like they don't want to scare people by having like runes on the controller and confusing them. This isn't like <laughs> 1998 anymore. Uh, you made this one. I like this one a lot. Yeah, I tried to go uh, just very bright yellow and blue. It's pretty loud on this one. Um, ideally, I would want something with a little more accents. The the sticks being a different color than the rest of the controller is definitely something uh, I was playing with, but I don't know how that's going to like actually work when they start doing stuff like that. But anyway, there it is. Cyberpunk, yeah. big game this year, ideally. I made this one. I hope that we. I really do hope we get a PS5 Crash Bandicoot reboot. 
a, a, a rebandicoot. I don't know what they're gonna. I feel like they would play with that bad word play that I just did there. Where'd like you a get re, that hair? A recoot. Uh, I grew up myself, my good man. Uh, no, I'm no, just no, kidding. No, I'm I'm like, orange <laughs> stuff. <laughs> uh, I think I searched fur and then I like color corrected it. Um, okay. But yeah, it's uh, that would be horrible. And someone else like went in and photoshopped it, made it so the fur was actually sticking off, which would be like the nastiest thing. But I mean, really, you really want to dual sense things. You got to dual sense things who's, with your hands. Who's that, who's that Philadelphia Flyers like hockey goblin? <laughs> Oh yeah, well, Grim, Grim, Grimbly, Grum, Grumbles, Gr- Grimby, Gritty, Gritty, Gritty. That's Gritty. it. That dude yeah. is not. That dude is not working right now. I just realized that. You could probably just cut him up and make controllers out of him. I think that's an I option. Guess you could, what what yeah. I'm saying is he might be just out there, just like get eaten out of the garbage. Well, that's scary to think about. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is an obvious one that would make a lot of people just so angry. Someone else already I did, did it. I, but... I, yeah, I, I just I just said f you in my brain. Yeah, no, it's a real it's a real it's a real stinker to put that out that picture up there because it's just an affront to all sorts of common decency. No one should have this. Did you move the X button? Yeah, I put the PS button over it. Everyone's going to oh, be PS'd no, off. I mean, like no, the actual X button because the X button's in a different spot on the Xbox One controller. No, I just put I just put the colors, the Xbox 360 colors on there, but I didn't do yeah. anything. Yeah, I didn't you, move the X how, button. Do you know how incredibly confusing that is? Yeah, no, it's <laughs> terrible. It's awful. It's really bad. It's like I said, it's an affront to common decency. So, of course, we uh-huh. had to do it. But it's going to get worse. We made so many of these. Uh, you made this one, which is actually very cute. Uh, though I feel like it's, it's sort of like it, if Mario, if that were actually like a small picture of Mario's chest, he'd be like a very different shaped man from what we're used to. <laughs> I actually the original version I had uh, where the M is it's all skin colored and he had a mustache and I stopped because it was disgusting. I started making one that was John McClane inspired and it was just like all chest hair for the top part and then the sort of undershirt part had like blood stains and like a machine gun on and I was like what am I doing why am I Google imaging chest hair and I just like deleted it so we don't have to see that yeah. one but there is it, another it's one hard I made. to do that because it's uh, like the, it doesn't have a head and so you end up like it's sort of like a reverse Funko Pop. Yeah, no, it's a bad, it's a bad time. Uh, anyway, <laughs> let's let's burn through these. Uh, this is something that I did. I thought this was pretty clever, and then I realized that it's even more clever if you really just point out the fact that this 100 percent looks like the Wii Trainer's torso. <laughs> like it looks like a camisole. Uh, and this one made me laugh a lot because she's, just... <laughs> she she's, like really, she's, she's really like she's really she's really getting into shape. into a grave. <laughs> yeah, she's getting into a different shape, which is I don't know whatever shape that is, like a weird rhombus thing. Um, I feel yeah, like shaking I'm it up, in getting shape. Yeah, no, we're all getting about that. Um, I made this one because go to hell okay. and f you. No, go to, yeah, like, no, it's on, just a, no. You. Yeah, and then you made this one, which I think is funny because it looks like my blanket back here. Look at that. Yeah, but also, it also looks like it has ticks in its mouth. <laughs> yeah. No, it's horrible. It's horrible. <laughs> it's, I just hate it. It's so, uh, it's so. I love doing this. This is so much fun. We did this with the uh, with the 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 series X boxes, and it's just fun to make bad photoshops and stuff. Also did it with, we did it with the Switch Lite. We've done. I, I made Minions Joy Cons like a few years ago. Yeah. Okay. This is but, this is so uh, this is moving, some bad art. Moving on, we have a great new segment on this show. This fine <laughs> show up in the, the hot dogs of internet, the internet community. This is the nonsense show that we make here. Um, this new segment is called "Things That the Dual Sense Looks Like," and you can really Things replace Dual Sense. Looks like. Yeah. You're ideally, we'd have like a, th- a th- we'd have a studio audience. I, I could have said that though, but I don't. That seems like asymmetrical. But anyway, we're gonna go through this real quick. Here are seven things the dual sense looks like according to the internet and also me. Number one, that woman from the Wally movie. You mean that, that woman? That, that's Evie. Evie, whatever. Eve, the robot, the Roomba that they, just she falls that in love woman. with. <laughs> she's she's the woman robot from Wally. <laughs> the stormtroopers from the new ones. Yes, definitely. Yeah, that, that look at those guys. Color. <laughs> they, they look just like this. They're like the same man. There they are. <laughs> uh huh. The BMW. That yeah, yeah, there's. That. I That's... think there's two different ones. There's like a rich, a rich person's one, and then there's like a slightly less rich person's one. And this Can one I is guess the, which one that is. Yeah, I think it's the slightly. <laughs> there's like the i8, which looks like a cool guy's car. And then there's this, which looks like a shoe. Most cars kind of look like shoes, though, depending on what kind of shoes you wear. Anyway. Ray Ayanami, who is a different type yeah. of Evie, 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 Evangelion. Um, <laughs> that, that woman. <laughs> that woman from Evangelion. Um, this one, this is a deep cut, but Shriek from Batman Beyond, who was, a, who was like a music producer who made like a suit that could make people go deaf and he fought Batman. It's that a good show. Kicks ass. 
Yeah. yeah. And this one is that's the guy from Vanquish. Remember Vanquish? No. Yeah, all right. Then this one is a this one I really noticed. I think this is the most on point. It looks a lot it looks a lot like Bemo from Big Hero Six, but if okay. he was wearing a camisole. Oh, oh. yeah. Wearing that spaghetti oh. strap. So that's oh, what I, I like think it, those are the things that this controller looks like by Max, age thirty four, I think. Wait, you don't, I don't know. know how old you know how old you are? I don't keep track of that. That's what cool. do you want me to that's do? Fine. Math every year, figure it out, no. count candles. No. I'm not doing that. No. Now, Max, uh, 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 artists who are much, much better than both of us combined uh, by a, a hundred million miles also uh, joined this week to celebrate the look of the Dual Sense, uh, the PS5 controller that was unveiled just a few days ago, and they took it in a very different direction. Uh, which I really appreciate. They actually made a uh, sort of uh, anime fan art that is uh, occasionally, I would say, borders on the uh, on it, the well, sexy. It gets a little bit like it's a little bit saucy. So maybe if you don't like to look at things that are a little bit saucy, don't look at this. But um, no, this all showed up on a thread on Resetera, um, and people started basically doing kind of crazy fan art. So I figured we could go through some of that and show off the different you know creations people have had. Um, but be forewarned, it might get a little bit, a little bit hot and bothered. Um, mm-hmm. so let's just, let's just take a look at that. Let me move over here. Uh Oh, this is it. This is that. That's actually wrong. That's from, that's from a different thing. Don't look at that. All right. So let's start things off. This one I really love. Uh, this is from KA92 on Twitter. A lot of these are, um, a lot of these people are Japanese. And I did a Google translate for pretty much all of the, uh, tweets that they had attached to it. And pretty much all of them were just like, really obvious that it was like what if the ps5 controller was alive or it's like some art i made of ps5 controller and i'm like why did i bother clicking that translate button it's they it didn't there's nothing <laughs> there's nothing i was missing that the image didn't already explain but this one's really yeah. cool this is like what if it turned into a robot and scampered off very exciting i'm into it um this one's cute it's like a little kid you know a little funny little person so you know that's this is uh yetsuya scion on twitter um mm-hmm. also this is a great selection of people to follow if you want to see some cool like art because these are all a bunch of people making great stuff on the internet um this one i like this is you know it's not again it's not nothing, nothing saucy about it it's just like hey what if the ps5 was like a little girl person little robot lady you know yeah, like their I mean, ponytails it also reminds me of the the boomerang controller that they uh initially showed off for the ps3 which they never yeah. made yeah they should still make that there's always time uh this one's funny um this is just just that. I like that. That looks a lot like the thing that I had, which is just Bimo is wearing a camisole. But what I think is funny is this is this artist is uh, the little pencil next to the 18 and up thing. That means that person draws some sexy stuff. I definitely scrolled down on that account on my work computer, and I'm probably not going to work here for too long because I saw I, some I stuff. That this, uh, this will start the trend that we'll get to see more of uh, in this short film that we're making here, which is uh, what if the analog sticks were, um, for, were the boobs? They will find out soon enough. For sure. Mm-hmm. Here, this one is uh, this is Teo Zion on uh, Twitter. Um, I didn't. I tried to translate this. It didn't make any sense to me. I, be- I believe that's. I mean, that's Cyrillic. I think. Um, but I don't know what. The, if anyone knows what that says, I do not know what it says. But it's a woman wearing the PS5 shirt. Oh, this looks like somebody from um, Detroit Become Human. Yeah, like the the, the color scheme is very much like and kind of on brand with that. So it's a good future. Uh, I hope. Um, and then we saw this one a minute ago. This is Dual Sense. As a lady wearing these clothes, which is, you know, I feel like fashion is very cyclical. This is something you could have worn in like 1998 to a corn concert or whatever. Um, <laughs> and we're getting a little bit, a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more skimpy here. Like a large overcoat with some tight pants. But, you know, here it is. There's a lady. Here's the girl of the PS. I, I like there. We had a PSVR up there, too, and some cat ears. Yeah, I, I was going to say. And then the, the sort of like uh, the, the, the neck thing, which is... Like it's sort of it's got a bunch of tech in it, but I can't tell what it is. Uh, I like I like the sort of dichotomy of like the the tight jumpsuit, but also the the puffy ass giant overcoat, which is really yeah. it's really dope to me. No, it's like all that. got kind of like a Hatsune Miku vibe to it. But this is yeah. uh, in in KMR8 on Twitter. Um, again, I I think the translation was something like, "Hey, I made a picture of a person as the PlayStation Five, and I was like, just Google Translate is too obvious. Why did I bother?" Um, and then here's this one. This is uh. This is uh, Go Fulham on uh, on Twitter. Uh, PS5 DualSense controller I just got revealed, so I made this artwork based on it to portray what I envisioned if it were a character, just something I made for fun. 
uh, we're saying how this looks like the person from Vanquish. This is kind of this is kind of Vanquish esque, mm-hmm. you know. I'm into it. Um, things get a little bit. Oh, look a little midriff. What's what's going on here? And then it's just here's you know again. Hey, what if the what if the controller were a person? I get it. Yeah, that's it. This is uh, Cicio underscore Z on uh, on Twitter. Uh, this one I really like because um, it's like a little. It's kind of going with the whole like the kind of the bemo and the camisole look. Um, this looks like an arms character. If that weren't like a Nintendo exclusive property. Yeah, I think like the sort of chunkiness of this new controller has lent a lot of artists into going with like these kind of inflated puffy arms approach, which I really dig because it's just like the proportions are 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 totally off, but like in a really kind of fun way. Her her hands look like Totoro's claws. I really like. There's yeah. something yes creepy and also Totoro adorable thing. about it. So I'm yes. into it. Uh, and then here we're getting a little bit. Uh, if you got kids in the room, maybe tell them to get the heck out of here because we're looking at some. Some cool, some cool pictures on the computer. Uh, again, Von Rose says PS5 controller, and then there's a woman that is also the PS5 controller. I like, I like that's just like the most like terse. Like, yeah, what do I label this? Here we go. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then here we're getting a little bit, getting a little bit interesting. This is a dual sense as the lady. The triggers are there as a hat. Um, this I is feel following like in a, sort of like Transformers rules where uh, a part you didn't expect to see somewhere else ends up uh, in a place you didn't ever think you'd see it at. Like sort of yeah, like where the, the truck tires end up like on the side of their arms or something like that. Like that's this like is what whole, happened here. That's like a whole thing. They like they make like model kits of like what if, uh, you know, World War II airplanes were also like beautiful schoolgirls. And it's like, well, that's a weird place for propellers. But here we go. Um <laughs> I feel like in we're in you know ten or you know five or ten years we're just going to see like statues and model kits that look like this. So people will be like, "Hey, here's a controller as a as a lady." There you go. You know you know what I dig about that one, by the way, uh, and this one too. They they didn't just automatically put the shoulder buttons on the shoulders. You know, like in that no. last one, the like the share button was on the shoulders. So that's smart. This is definitely getting a little. So little I had more. to go. I had to go make an account on Pixiv.net, which I was unfamiliar with, but it's basically like Japanese deviant art. And sure enough, there's a lot of things on there that. I should not have been looking at on my work computer, but oops. So this is Pross who made this. This is, this is gorgeous too. Like this was, um, you know, people posting stuff on Twitter, on Twitter, just like, you know, sketches they did is one thing. This is like, you know, this is like professional artists and stuff, jumping their stuff on there, like super high res, a lot of like gorgeous brush strokes and things. Um, this one is, I love this. Is like, I love this one. This one's gorgeous. Um, like super painterly again, you know, you, you mentioned the whole like idea of like, what if thumbsticks were the boob and sure enough, yeah, there it is. Um, mm-hmm. Don't know how I feel about that haircut. It's kind of Fifth Element. But that's Quasimodo X. Uh, this one uh, and I Nike. Um, if you didn't like, if I hadn't seen the PlayStation controller and I saw this first, I just wouldn't get it. You know, like this is such a departure from that. It's kind of like, you know, a bit of a walk. But I'm into it. Um, and this one's definitely like pretty pretty saucy. You know, oh look at that. Yeah. It's a lady as a controller. Also, like no, I definitely. feel like my question I'm- here is like. We don't know how big this controller is exactly, like to scale. So maybe is it like, what if it's really small? You know, what if it's like way smaller than we're used to? That could be strange. Who knows? Anyway, fan art. Uh, this one is like fully like, okay, we're making a character for a fighting game. Here we go. Here's like the full the full specs and everything, which is cool. Right. Uh, and this then is finally, one that like I, I don't think you would immediately know it's a PS5 controller if it didn't say Dual Sense on top. No, but I, I mean it's it's like we look at it, we're like, what a stupid controller, but it's like a really versatile palette and a bunch of like really kind of smart designs. So I think I think it's going to grow on a lot of people. Um, and I mean, if it doesn't, I, who, who cares? It does. We it's you don't even look at it. You just hold it in your hand and you look at the screen, and then you get to see characters who look like this punching each other or fighting wizards or whatever. And now this yeah. last one, I want to warn everybody. This last one is probably uh, a little bit little bit too sexy for some of the stuff we do here on IGN just like a heads up so if you're really if you're really sensitive to that kind of stuff you maybe want to avert your eyes but a really oh boy yeah oh man yeah yeah it's uh boss logic kicks ass by the way that dude uh no he's great yeah phenomenal art this is what I love is how incredibly talented this guy is like he he could have gone, and he he made a ton of custom DualSense uh, PS5 controllers that are like way over the top and like incredibly skilled. And then this is, which is just like I love this one's just silly as hell. Yeah, yeah, it's silly as hell, and you have to sort of untrain your brain to make Photoshop work like this for you. Um, but I do like that the uh, it looks like the the little sort of share button things and the and you know the start button are kind of uh, holding this guy's belt up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good look. Um. 
anyway, so yeah, those were some fun little photoshops. And uh, you know, uh, scrub through that and go follow those people on Twitter. Give them some love. Uh, it's I don't know. I love I love the internet and I love video games because it's this kind of stuff where like a big thing happens and we all get excited about it. It's like this yeah. same thing with like the whole like Annabelle and um, or Isabel and, and Doom guy hanging out thing. So. Yeah. Now, um, Max, you've been you've been playing a ton of Final Fantasy VII remake. Uh, you got it. You got the game a little bit early. You're like what, twenty uh, something hours in? Twenty five hours um, in at this point? Something like that. I'm 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 definitely like a good chunk of the way through. I think the game is. I'm, I'm hearing between. You know, depending how you're playing, between like twenty five and forty hours. Um, right. Which is you know too short for a lot of people, but like given the sort of general production value of the whole thing, it's really impressive. Uh, I think it's weird about Final Fantasy VII is like you know you I, I played it you know by, way back in in middle school and it's like a bunch of sort of like familiar characters and like um sort of like looking at looking at what it is now it's like these incredibly gorgeously beautifully rendered characters uh, we've all seen the trailers I, I assume a lot of people out there are playing it possibly playing it right now uh, or possibly just not watching the show because they're busy playing it um, it's just like stunning because they took all these like these these characters that we remember as being really fleshed out and impressive and then they've turned them into like living breathing human looking characters with like pores and like eyelashes and it's just stunning to look at uh, and it's especially crazy when you sort of look at like the original characters were just kind of like they were like little low poly like little low poly critters and you know it's weird <laughs> because I, I, you know it, they became very human playing the game back in you know 1997 um and i think we were always like oh yeah like they're totally supposed to be real people but at this you know you look at the concept art and you know really they were even then they were kind of like they're kind of anime characters and it's weird because the current For rendition sure. looks more realistic than what sort of they were supposed to look like back then yeah, their proportions are like, like uh, if you look at uh, like Cloud, he looks like nobody is really tall in that way, you know? Yeah. Like I mean, you're, it, tall man, even, you're not even tall in that way. Like, you're proportionately tall. No, so I mean, have, I was like, saying, like the, the, four times bigger than the rest of your body. Yeah. Like, the characters in, in, in Remake are like, they're stylized and they're, um, but they're, but they're still like recognizably like very human. Like, they're not, they're not trying to make them like look like complete anime characters. I feel like they probably could have made this game a lot faster if they went with a cell shaded look, but you know, mm -hmm. people probably wouldn't want that. Um, and it reminded me of South park in a really weird way. <laughs> it's kind of like an odd thing to look at it this way, but you look at it and these characters are like also things that were incredibly popular in 1997. Uh, and it's a group of friends and they get in some trouble. Uh, and again, they're these like little, you know, little quaint little sort of like low poly characters. And you look at, you know, the original like <laughs> FF seven character and it's like, Huh, huh, yeah, that's sort of like I can kind of see it. Like, and obviously, like, stylistically, tonally, entirely different things. But where it really started to click was like realizing that there's that, there's that episode of South Park where they all get like ninja weapons and they all like suddenly turn into like full blown anime characters. And you see these like little, like kind of quaint, like, you know, low poly characters get like totally stylized and they suddenly have like all these badass entrance entry moves and it's just like they get in these all these epic fights and they, they're all like they have like a, a theme song and everything and it's really funny because i feel like the leap between south park character designs and like full-on anime designs is kind of like the same leap between you know ff7's original character models and like the uncanny valley like demonstrably human looking fully mo-capped beautifully rendered characters we have now and there's sort of like this there's almost something kind of silly about it um, because they yeah. still, even, even within universe, there's this weird thing where we're like, and you know, we have, we have like realistic video games and we have like video games that are realistic. And like, you know, you look at, you know, you look at GTA five and there's still like that cartoony CGI element to it, but like, you're like, Oh, that's Los Angeles. Those are normal cars. That's all that stuff. And FF seven remake has like regular pedestrians who exist in this universe and they kind of, they're people who have to go to work. They have like regular salary men hanging out. They have like, you know, vending machines. There's like, you know, there's this stuff that's kind of like, oh, I, that's, a, th those are the suburbs. This is like normal things. And then you look at like these characters who are like walking around with just impossible weaponry and doing stuff that doesn't make any sense. Um, like Barrett has a machine gun for a hand, which has like two magazines sticking out of it, but he will fire it nonstop. And he sort of reloads, but like, where are the bullets? Where do they come from? And there's this kind of like magnificent leap in logic that makes like, it's almost like South Park levels of like absurdity to it. And I'm, yeah. I'm kind of, I mean, even just looking at this sequence right here, uh, seeing it sort of side by side with the original, it's like, it gives you a sense of how much like this. It's like when people are like, hey, we did like a, we did a live action recreation of like, you know, the Simpsons opening or something. 
Right, right. And, and for transparency, for anybody watching this video being like, uh, you know, South Park is like a juvenile cartoon. And this is a hyper realistic story that makes me cry. You you adore this game. You love this game. This is yeah, a, no, I don't, I'm not I'm not making fun of it. Like comparing I, two things that, that you really like. I'm saying that there's and also like like FF7, like it has like epic heart wrenching moments and is beautifully rendered. It also has incredibly weird, goofy, silly over the top moments, which is what makes me so happy about it. But like, you know, cloud making this grand entrance is like so fun. I mean, it's like seeing somebody, you know, you remember being like sort of a dork in high school and then seeing them, you know, after college, you're like, Holy crap, you got in really good shape, you know, like, <laughs> but it's also, it's still cloud, you know, it's like, there's still, right. there's something like it's seeing old friends. There's something so familiar about it. And, you know, kind of like hammering home on this sort of weird, this weird dichotomy further, uh, South Park became a turn-based RPG and yeah. Final Fantasy's last actual official follow-up was a cartoon with Advent Children. So like they yeah. kind of, you know, it's like they went opposite directions and obviously there's they're they're like there's there's really nothing in common but it was like really weird to be like to see these like characters who were like just almost like too fleshed out and be like I'm not I'm not used to I'm not used to seeing like a realistic human behave in such an animated fashion and I don't know it it weirdly enough works but no I totally yeah. totally love that I, I I think it's awesome watching two franchises like that kind of grow up together and go in different directions and if you look at like like FF7 sort of feels like what uh 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 you know trey parker and matt stone did with something like book of mormon where it's like they made this like hyper live action realistic fully realized human version of this slapstick goofy thing that they were working on in the 90s uh but still retaining the total dna of 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 what you expected it to from the beginning yeah, yeah i really i really really dig that and it's i mean it's so funny because we have like i think we all sort of like i don't know we kind of just gaslit ourselves to being like oh yeah like you look at the original ff7 and it's like it still looks cool it looks great but there's parts of it that haven't really aged super well and this is this isn't what they wanted this isn't like what i think the creators wanted ff7 to look like exactly this is sort of like what did what did we all think it looked like in our heads like what was it in our imaginations you know it's which is right and you look at the concept art and even that was like more kind of you know kind of more cartoony and it's like it's i don't know it's it's cool as hell to see this weird like this weird leap and this transformation so um I hope everyone's having a good time and getting a chance to play it. And dear God, I hope we find out about when the second installment comes out. So, yeah, I'm uh, I'm really excited to uh, dig into the game this weekend uh, and talk about it with you next week because uh, it seems like this is going to be one of the big ones this year. And also, I don't really know how the rest of the year is going to shake out, but it's really cool that just in the last week or so, we've gotten Resident Evil Three and Final Fantasy Seven, which is you know two franchises that I grew up worshiping as like a kid on the East coast in America, looking at Nintendo power and PlayStation magazines and EGMs and being like, Oh, what, like what is happening in Japan right now? Like, do you know, these guys like, are, they're killing it. Do you know how much like it would just give somebody a, a freaking aneurysm? If you took like FF seven remake back to like 1997 and were like, Hey, check this out. Like yeah, you, would, dude, you, I mean, would, you would, you would, you would shit your pants. Like it was, it's, if, it's if insane. You, if you, if you showed me, the remake of FF7 just as the original one came out or the remake of Resident Evil 3 just as the original one came out, I wouldn't even be able to comprehend that. I mean, same with something like if you put, you know, the the Super Mario Odyssey level uh, that recreates Mario 64, if you put that next to the original Mario 64, like, I don't know, I feel like just incredibly lucky sometimes that we live in a world um, where we're constantly getting awesome new stuff, but also that people can look to the past and take these franchises these staples these ips these characters and these moments and these stories and upgrade them uh, using modern technology and storytelling and make them relevant to a new audience especially because it's like playing a lot of these old games is you know kind of difficult you know like uh also you also play like the original like ff7 on switch and stuff like that but also i feel like ff7 great. would never get made today like it's got all these yeah. little it's got all these things in it that are just sort of sort of wonky and sort of silly and like I feel like if they were to try to do it now, there'd be like way too much. Like, no, I can't have that. That's too weird. You can't get that weird. Yeah. So it's like it's like this wonderful. Like they, it's almost like they planted a seed. And we all have this nostalgia for it. Also, between RE three, RE two, FF seven, all the other things that have gotten remade, it like it breaks my heart that we're not getting like a Metal Gear Solid, getting that treatment because I just want that so badly. Uh, anyway, feel, we have. I feel like we, we will. Some, uh, I feel like we, we have will. some people in the chat. We have. Uh, 
Hashashashin786 says, uh, hello, IGN people. Hello. Um, Hi. Berg, Burger XB says, which other Final Fantasy do we want? That's on Twitch. Um, also, sorry if we haven't been engaging with the chat enough. We're looking at YouTube, Twitch, and also I'm running running all the images off my laptop. So we, we've got a lot of mm-hmm. weird stuff set up here, and it's a little bit wonky, but we're, we're doing the best we can. Uh, which yeah, FF7 would like, you... I mean, uh, which, actually, I'm, uh, which Final Fantasy game? Um, yeah. I, I really, my favorite Final Fantasy games are two uh, U.S., um, you know, with uh, Cecil and, and stuff like that, and Palom and Porm and all them. Two so US, um, that's five? five. Yeah, right. Yes, the Super Nintendo. Yeah, right. Um, and also um, the Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles, uh, like port remake thing that we've been hearing about for ages on Switch. That I'm really excited for. I would like kill to play that game online with you right now because it's like, it's sort of like a. It's very Final Fantasy Diablo ar- sort of arcade beat 'em up with like some quasi deep RPG elements to it. Like it, there's it sort of like pushes you to mm-hmm. replay the game a bunch of times and get a bunch of cool stuff. Um, yeah, I played that game uh, in I want to say like 2004, 2005 on GameCube with a bunch of friends after a really bad breakup and a bunch of booze. And um, this is not a great year for everybody, so I feel like something like that would be. Uh, really nice. Um, anyway, uh, I want to talk about Animal Crossing for a little bit because we've been talking about it crazy. Of course I do. I still really, really love this game. I'm definitely slowing down a little bit. Uh, but I will say that like now that I've spent like 170-something hours in this game, um, I'm noticing that there's something just in- in- incredibly off about what's really, really missing here. Uh, and that is specifically... Mario and Nintendo items. Now, that has a long history of showing up in Animal Crossing games. If you look at the image here in the upper right, that's the GameCube version. That's what one of my rooms looked like in that game. This is a picture I found on the internet. I sadly don't have my original memory card. But you could go and basically find uh, you know, all sorts of furniture pieces and then NES games and you know Zelda Master Swords and Triforces and stuff like that and totally deck out your home. Um, none of that really exists in Animal Crossing right now, which is sort of like a huge miss for me. Um, the hope is that they're going to add that in some sort of timed event in the same way they did Bunny Day. Maybe they'll do like Mario Day or something like that, which kind of sucks because we just had Mario Day that was March 10th. Um, but this is uh, you know the 35th anniversary of Super Mario, so I think we're going to get some stuff added eventually. Uh, if you look at the um, other screenshots here, this is stuff that was you know added to Pocket Camp recently. So that's the most recent Animal Crossing game before New Horizons had a ton of Mario stuff in it, ton of Zelda stuff, Nintendo stuff in general. Um, that being said, this is one of the most customizable video games ever made, and people are going nuts on the internet creating custom patterns and textures and all sorts of stuff that you can deck out your homes or your clothes with. So I wanted to highlight uh, a couple of friends of mine and some total strangers on the internet that have made some really cool stuff in this game uh, that uh, will bring a little Mario, Zelda, Nintendo flair into your moment-to-moment. So get out get out your screenshot button or some pen and paper because we've got some crafts you can do at home in your Animal Crossing game. That's right. What the uh, hell so is this? This is, this is my arcade at home. I wanted to point this out because... Uh, a, You're I'm just showing off, man. I know, I know. You're but, a time thief. We, know, we talked about this. Get out of my hair. I don't have any, but get out of it. <laughs> um, th- th- the, the reason I'm pointing this out is because this is the closest you can get to like video game related stuff in the game right now. There's Nintendo Switches. There's super generic arcade cabinets that have like a bootleg Ken and Ryu fighting. You know, there's like the a Mahjong game. And then there's like a bunch of uh, pinball games and stuff like that. Like it's nice, but we, we really need the Mario stuff. So let's get into it. Um, let's start with this, which was made by uh, Ikanot on Twitter. Ika has been on our show. Uh, he uh, the, was one of the creators of Falcon Age for PSVR, the VR bird game. Uh, Ika came on up at noon a, a year or two ago, and we talked to him about uh, uh, funny bird things. And He's a good sport and, video and clearly yeah. also good at playing other animal games that are... Yeah, and so he figured out a way to put together a Super Mario costume, which in the past they had something called the Big Bros hat and the Little Bros hat, which was Mario and uh, Luigi hats. They're not available right now, but you can customize hats. So he got a red baseball cap, put the M on it. He got these like funny disguise glasses, uh, and which is the closest thing you can get to like a full-on mustache right now. 
these uh, sort of like bell bottom looking jeans. And then I believe just like Chelsea boots and threw them all together. And it totally works. That, that, uh, that works. Yeah. Yeah, it totally works. So, um, yeah, if you want the code for the uh, for the hat, there it is right there. I wrote it down at the bottom. Uh, keep in mind, uh, these codes get a little finicky because they have O's and zeros in them, and I tried to make that as clear as possible uh, when I could. His friend code's also up there, so I guess you got to hit that boy up too. Oh, boy. Um, so he called it the Barrio hat, which I love because it's bootleg, and this is the Barrio top. Um, that code kind of looks like it says Ma for Frontener or Mourn for Mourn for Four <laughs> Quay. <laughs> So there's the Barrio top right there. Uh, keep going. Let's check out a little bit more. This thing is awesome. Okay, so when you get Nook Miles, you can actually buy a custom phone case for your phone that you use in the game t- for pretty much everything. And so the way that works is you order it with Nook Miles. It'll show up the next day. You bring it to your sort of like crafting bench, and using a custom texture, you can add a Game Boy to it. And so I did this in my game, and now I just have a Game Boy on my phone at all times and every time my character pulls out his phone it looks like a little game boy which i love yeah if you were so playing it backwards like there. a dumbass yeah i know i know you <laughs> ever looked at the back of the game boy to see what game was in it that looks like you got a broken game boy and you're trying to call the customer service number <laughs> why would he be smiling about that <laughs> i don't know maybe maybe he's just looking at his precious batteries and doesn't want to waste them on a road trip all right anyway, move along is, well here's what it okay. looks like i like it it's fine it's cute it, that's uh, mm-hmm. didn't did you used to have that phone case I think I did for like a day, and it was super loose, and I got rid of it. Oh no! You know what happened? It, uh, it like it was made from like some. I bought it off some like cheap bootleg website, and it like turned colors, almost like the original Game Boy and Super Nintendo that's, did. That's fitting, yeah. Yeah, this is um, cute. I love this so much. Uh, so uh, Zion, dude, is uh, Zion. It's for Nintendo Life. He's a buddy of mine. Super, super nice guy. Uh, he and I sort of connected uh, on the internet about a year or so ago when uh, the Link's Awakening stuff started drumming up. Um, and we've realized we're both huge Link's Awakening fans. On some islands in Animal Crossing New Horizons, and Max, I don't know if you have this, there's a, like, some people have this weird little alcove that's just sort of like a tiny beach. And the only way to get to it is like you go you go down a rock wall. Some people have this, some people don't. You can also put this on on any part of your island. Uh, so he made this custom sort of like PNG style texture of Link and Marin from Link's Awakening sitting on the bench between two palm trees. Uh, and I I love this so much that I immediately recreated it in my game. And so if you want to be able to do that in your game, uh, here's the code right there. That's uh, that's cute as hell. But when you put it on the ground, it looks like they both just like passed out or got killed execution <laughs> style. Like that's yeah. that's horrible. That's like, I don't. Know. Yeah, it's it's definitely a little grim, but you know, like Link starts that game passed out, almost killed. Oh uh, yeah, hi Mr. Out. Nook, I'm uh, down at the alcove. We got some bodies. Yeah, have you? Yeah, we're gonna have, have to seen, send some. Have you seen the stuff that people have done with the like the 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 pelican bird, the seagull, or like they put a bunch no. of, of blood oh, coming at? That's oh. horrible. Yeah, that's so awful. it looks like he got shot dead on the beach. Oh, that's nasty. Yeah. Uh, and finally, um, it's more than just textures. You can also uh, change the theme in your town. So a lot of people don't know you can do this in old Animal Crossing thing. You go to talk to Isabel in Resident Services, and she'll let you change the town theme. And if you're like me, you went in there, and then you're like, what song do I make it? Just make it World 1-1 from Super what's, Mario. What's, is this yours? Is this what you have? No, this is uh, – yeah, so I actually just changed mine to this. But um, this is Mine? pre-marinated burger on Reddit. All right. I made a I there's actually a whole subreddit for these which is great. I got the the I don't know what it would guitar tabs I guess it is for like uh Cruel Angels thesis. So like whenever I talk to anybody it's like um so that's fun. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, that's, that's some fun stuff you can do right now. Um if uh, if you're stuck at home, uh, which I know you are, uh, or if you're not, maybe you're going to work. <laughs> but in the meantime, um, uh, we've all been watching a show called Tiger King. It's um, a wet, hot Florida mess of a show. Uh, I, I I've I've enjoyed the hell out of it. I binged through it. I'm I want to find out more about it. Uh, this this is a sort of a, a cast of characters that I didn't know I would care about. That I'm suddenly like, wow, all of these yeah. people are dangerous and interesting so everyone's talking about there's like they're already making a a movie adaptation and i think the the kind of running theme is like why do we need that we already have the show so i i i posit this we should have a game instead and we should have not just a regular game we should have a far cry game about tiger king because that is the most perfect 
pairing of brands possible. Yes. Hear us out. We have now, we haven't had a new Far Cry game in uh, what seems like forever. Uh, it's actually not been that long. We get them pretty frequently. But we got Far Cry 5 and New Dawn, which were both really fun in their own way. Uh, but they didn't really go as over the top as I wanted them to. And Max, you and I have taken numerous trips to the great state of Florida, and every single time we're there and we're learn, we learn more and more about the, the wildlife, the animals, and the cast of characters that lives there and roams those streets, um, we always say that they should make a Far Cry game in Florida. And yeah. uh, Tiger King basically brought all of those worlds together for us. I mean, so Tiger, they, out, he was in Omaha. He was in Nebraska, though. Yeah, I know, but he had, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of Florida people on that show. There's definitely a lot of Florida. I want to talk about, let's talk about Joe Exotic, for starters. Um, He's, I, it kind of hit me. You look at the sort of the, the pantheon of different Far Cry bosses we've had over the past few games, the sort of mainline ones. In three, we had Voss, who was like telling us the definition of an insanity. He's had like a weird haircut, had a lot of tattoos. Yep. We had uh, Pagan Min in four, who was like this really just fabulous, like despot. And then in five, we had Joseph Seed, who was like this uh, shirtless, tattooed man with like a, another weird, bad haircut. And it kind of hit me. Joe Exotic is really a combination of all of them. He hangs out yeah. with tigers. He's got his own, like, he's got his compound full of guns and, and drugs and nonsense in it. Uh, and I actually, we, we decided to mess around with this. Like, there's, this is, like, th- this, this show, like, this actual, this existing real universe of Tiger King involves, like, psychopaths, narcissists, uh, murder plots, drugs, uh, compounds, Tons of wild animals, tons of wild animal cruelty. Uh, there are th- th- lots of explosives, weirdly enough. Uh, so it's really, it just makes perfect sense. Uh, and I actually went in the Far Cry 5 level editor and made, and made a Far Cry, or made a Tiger King map. Uh, it's really bad, but I figure we could check that out. Uh, Brian, are you looking at our stream right now? Do you have that up? Yeah, I do. Okay. Uh, Alexia, why don't you roll this? This is this the Far Cry 5 arcade is actually really awesome. There's one major, major oversight. It has stuff from all sorts of different uh, Far Cry games, but it does not have any tigers. It only has cougars. So if this were Cougar King, there it is. I basically created this weird compound. Uh, they have a birthday party pig, which I put in there. Um, <laughs> which I thought was okay, a thing so that you just you drop right into the outpost. Yeah, and this is I'm playing on like explore mode, so nothing's gonna actually try to kill me. But then over here, you walk kind of around the edge here. Uh, <laughs> this is this is the Walmart truck full of like rejected meat and all the dudes unloading it. I got all these different carcasses. I got the the cows, the pigs, the deer, the big the blood buckets, and then there's drug stuff over here that you can blow it up. You know, because of explosives, you shoot it with a gun, it blows up. Oh it's great. yeah, I I really love the uh, I love the truck full of full of dead cows. Yeah, and, pigs. and then. Sort of up the top here, uh, there's the there's all the 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 cougars in the cage. The big there, and there's really. I thought it was going to limit how many I could put down. I got to jump ahead here, but I I just put this barn. I left the barn door open so you can go inside. You can just see these cougars just going completely bananas over here. <laughs> they're just going all over. They're just going. <laughs> they're going nuts. Get them, how did you get them to get so uh, wild and, and randy in there? They're wild. They're wild animals, my friend. So then I did something, <laughs> and I went in and I made it so I replaced the front gate with just like a really, like a really shitty, uh, like a like a gate. So the cougars are just everywhere. Um, <laughs> there's the pig again. Where is the Where's the freaking cougars? Is there like a? Did I have another one? I think I did like a different clip where I like I showed off. Maybe I didn't. I didn't show it. There's definitely. I I did set them loose. Uh, no, let's see. I think we have a different one though. Then the weird thing is, anyway, I, I, I just was playing around. I wish that they had tigers in this game. However, I wasn't the first person to have this idea. I went on Far Cry Arcade and I searched Tiger King, and someone else, sure enough, named Toctimus Prime made a Tiger King map that is just, it's just a zoo. It's just a zoo full of people trying to kill each other. And it's honestly, it's a better, it's a better zoo than I have here, but it's still like, it's nice to know I'm not the only one with this idea. Um, I think we've got... Yeah, yeah. here we go. Um, it's weird, though, because it's like a really well-designed level, but you can't really tell where the cougars and tigers are. You just hear, like, a constant roaring, and there's, like, enemy markers all around you on your HUD, but you don't really know where they go. Um, yeah, I just want... I want to... I desperately want there to be a, a Far Cry 6 with Tiger King stuff in it. Yeah, you and I are both gigantic Far Cry fans, uh, and I think this is the perfect fit. I mean, this has this has arson. It has 
uh, assassination plots that go bad. Um, it's got wild animals, explosives, uh, guns. There's like weird dudes that have like seven wives. You know, like there's a lot of very like just completely ridiculous, over the top Far Cry stuff. I mean, I was know? even thinking about it in in Tiger King. Like, there's a whole part where Joe Exotic is like sitting in his tiger cage on a literal throne, and I was like, does that? Like you look at the, all the Far Cry box art, it's always some lunatic who's like either on a pile of dead bodies or he's holding like a weird Last Supper thing or he's like on an actual throne with tigers nearby. And sure enough, I'm not six poster might look like. And it's I think it's pretty, I think it's I'm pretty on brand here. Uh, Flex, yeah, I totally my, agree. So my graphic what I here. Think, what I think they should do for this game is instead of recreating the show, which like you said, like we already saw, um, this show should pick up as you, the main character, breaking Joe Exotic out of prison. And that's the first level. So yeah, you, you helicopter into the jail he's in, you break him out, and uh, he starts giving you missions. And the main boss of the game is either, you know, uh, Carol Baskins or PETA or, you know, there's a, there's a number of different ways you can go. This is fantasy. It's not real. I'm not saying that you should do any of these things or support any of these things. The video game, it's fake. Don't get mad at me. There. Got well, that I mean, the way. So the whole thing with like the Far Cry, the Far Cry IP is I feel like they're always trying to pull from like the craziest real life people imaginable. They're always trying to make like, they're always trying to make like endearing characters who are also psychopaths. And I'm like, yeah. you just got, you got like your entire, you've got your, your character guide right there. You've got like mm-hmm. warring kingdoms of wild animal jails. Like it's just, just, just rip it off. And yeah, I mean, I realize it takes, it takes longer to make a Far Cry game. They're probably working on Far Cry 6 already. And they're probably all like snapping their pencils in half being like, damn it. We didn't make it about tigers. It's set in World War One, And we're like, I don't know. I don't, it's probably not World War One. So, but. yeah, I mean, like the, the thing is about the Far Cry games is that they have a history of coming out and being pretty awesome. And then a few months later, they do a DLC, which is like totally diagonal from everything else they're doing. Like they'll go to space or Blood Dragon or Vietnam or something like that. The Himalayas, like there's a whole bunch of stuff where they can do where they're, you know, they're like, you're fighting a Yeti now, you know, you're fighting uh, the Tiger King now. I think there's an opportunity. So even if it's not in the main Far Far, Far Cry 6, uh, a few months later, maybe we'll go something like this. We're just trying yeah. to plant a seed. That's all we're trying to, to do. We're trying to yeah. plant a seed in Ubisoft's head. Yeah, that'd be nice. Um, anyway, we're, we're running out of time here. But real quick, I wanted to give a shout out to a game. You sent me this trailer. Uh, it's called The Procession to Calvary. Um, yeah. It is a point and click adventure game that is made entirely out of old Renaissance art. And it looks like basically a Monty Python video game, which I'm super into. Um, yep. It came out today. It's 10 bucks. It's on Steam. It is uh, PC, Mac, and Linux, which is great. We, we, don't have, we don't have cool gaming PCs, so we can't play like all the games on Steam. We can play like some of them. But luckily, yep. this one is one of them, so that's cool. Um, um, yeah, no, check this game out because it uh, it reminds me of like somewhere between like going to a really hot, like a really nice European art gallery, and then also Spider Man Cartoon Maker. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. It's, <laughs> that's kind it's of totally. It. It's totally slapstick. Like there's a the way they the way they handle sort of art and textures and animation in this game is so goofy. I love it so much. This is honestly like one of my favorite looking games in a very long time, and it's. Cheap Eating, right because it's so, like it's they clip you art, that, like a bunch of <laughs> Renaissance you remember that games. game dragon's crown where it just had like yeah. the, it had like all the wizards and like the ladies with the huge butts and stuff and like the the backgrounds like that was supposed to be sort of aping like paint painterly stuff but it was also like really still kind of doing like video gamey fantasy stuff so like people were always like that lady has a huge ass but like in reality like i like that they're just straight up they're just ripping assets from existing art which is all yeah. free. Like those, the people who made this are all dead. Like that's the brilliance of it. Like if you're going to make a game and you're going to steal assets, steal assets from people who've been dead for 300 years <laughs> and just use their character designs. Like I want a Hieronymus Bosch video game so badly. Yeah, um, seriously. And I feel like this is going to pave the way for something like that. Like this totally opens those doors. It's also like, this is a little less ghoulish than making like Tupac, the hologram dance on stage. Cause it's like, that's a real man. This is you basically, know, like, an, if you, sh- if you showed like a paintings, if you showed like a Flemish Renaissance painter a video game, he would have a heart attack and he would explode. <laughs> he would not want that at all. Um, <laughs> yeah. So anyway, I, I apologize for not interacting with the chat enough. Like we, I feel like we, we, we make a very stupid show here. We also put like a ton of research and time into making it. We have, did we get to all our stories today? Not even. No, not, not quite. Even close. Um, but we, we put a lot of work into this. This is our third episode doing it in this kind of latest format. So thanks to everyone who stopped in to join us. Please, uh, 
I don't know what you're doing a week from now, but chances are, depending where you live, you're probably not going out. So come hang out with us uh, Friday night. We're doing this every week until they tell us to stop. And then we're probably going to, if they tell us to stop, we'll probably do it somewhere else. I don't, I don't know. We'll, we'll figure it out. Um, we'll do something somewhere, but we're going to keep doing this. Yeah. But uh, yeah. what do we have? Do we have anything else? Oh, I have a very, exp- uh, very exciting thing to talk about that's happening uh, next week. Uh, this was going to happen this week. Uh, we have a special guest, I believe we're still lining it up, but we're going to have, uh, and it's, it's also weird to schedule special guests in this day and age because like, it's literally just getting somebody to like Skype with you. Like it's yeah. not as the same as being like, Oh, we're going to have this person in the office, but Todd McFarlane, the creator of spawn, you know, infamous comic book just launched a new Kickstarter to celebrate sort of the 25th anniversary of, uh, the first spawn action figure. He put it up on Kickstarter and it got a million dollars in like two days. So I don't really feel like guilty being like, Oh, give this man money. It's like, he's, he's fine, but it's cool to talk to Todd McFarlane. So, um, right. but that's, that's up. We got a picture of the toy right here. It's, it's like the, so cool. It's badass, and it's also we just mm-hmm. talked about Spawn figures the other day. We got the Mortal Kombat one, but like I'm I'm a purist. I love the idea of doing a overhaul of the original action figure from way back in the day. So that's that's cool as hell. Yeah, that um, cape is so damn. It's like it's just so so well made. I love it so much. I I totally want this toy. Um, this is a. Uh, it's it's gonna be super cool. You and I. I think we interviewed Todd McFarlane together at Comic Con. Maybe our we first talked Comic-Con to him. Together. Yeah, it was our first Comic Con together. Which I don't know if we're gonna do Comic Con. I don't know what that looks like. We interviewed him about. Oh, it looks like this. <laughs> yeah, right. We interviewed him about Game of Thrones construction sets, which is like and it was Walking cool. Dead toys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's like I want to talk to him about Spawn, and we're gonna yep. do that. So that'll be great. Um. Yeah. So let's see. Uh, I'm just checking the chat here. Thanks to everybody who hung out. Like seriously, it means it means the world to us. Um, and sorry for not doing more uh, back and forth yeah. stuff. I hope we cheered you up and we had a fun time. You know, no, totally. On a personal level, uh, this feels like a nice way to end the work week uh, because otherwise, it just sort of like ends with a whimper. And um, this is it. It rolls into the weekend, which is really no different than the the rest of the work week. We're just like on our computers a little, little bit less. Uh, but yeah, thank you for tuning into the show and watching with us because uh, it's been it's been really fun and really uh, like honestly like helpful in in these weird times. Do we have time for a quick show and tell? Let's do it. You want What do you want? You want to show your thing first? This weird thing to yeah. say over a webcam. I'll show, I'll show my thing first. Uh, so this is uh, I tweeted this out a couple years ago, and Max, you and I made a video on this that we never actually put up anywhere. But um, I was on the East Coast a couple years ago uh, visiting uh, my dad, and I found this this thing, which is basically a uh, a bunch of drawings I did of Star Wars characters when I was like ten or eleven years old. Is this supposed so, to be a board game? Yeah, it was supposed to be a board game. It's based on uh, King Tut's game, which is uh, Tutankhamun when he was buried. They put him in a tomb, obviously, and then a bunch of like. <laughs> Horrible people dug it up decades later, centuries later, and they found uh, uh, a board game called King Tut's Game, or he called it, I forget, my, it was called My Senate. Game. Yeah, My Game. It was actually, I think it was called Senate. And um, S-E-N-E-T. Wait, 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 wait. Was, this, was this like a sixth grade homework assignment and you were like, I'm going to draw Boba Fett? No, no, no. For I actually I went to a museum in New York City and found out, found out about King Tut's board game and we bought it at the gift shop and I brought it home and I loved it. I loved it so much that I started uh, making like custom versions of it, and so I oh, basically weird. did this. Yeah, so this totally like that. Yeah, that totally yeah. sounds like a thing that I would have been assigned to do, where they're like, "You have to redesign the, you know, a, a, a ziggurat," and I'd be like, "Well, I'm going to make a Star Wars ziggurat because we're I don't want to talk yeah. about Syria yeah. or whatever, you know." That's why there, there's like a what's horrible, it's called? The horrible drawing of Sarlacc pit, and if you like land on it, you you lose a turn. You know, like I think like Yoda gives you an extra turn, like stuff like that. Um, but what I love is like there's there's just the worst drawings on here. Um, Max Rebo, Han Solo, all the aliens are okay, but most of the other when you are just like when you first made that, did you have that thing where you were like, "This is the best drawing I've ever done." Yeah, yeah. You were like, and "I've I, never seen such a good picture of Chewbacca," and then like you look at it like 20 years later, and you're like, "What the f- what the what is it's, that?" It's super weird because it's like I I didn't really think about it, and then like I dug it up and. We're cleaning up like some corner of the basement when I was home a couple years ago. And my wife, I think like secretly snuck it into her suitcase. And like a couple months later for my birthday, 
handed me this big wrapped thing and I open it up and it's like professionally framed under glass and everything. And I was like, okay, well, I guess I have to look at this children's drawing I made like for the rest of my life. Cause and you're like, and your daughter yeah. can now identify star Wars characters from it. Yeah. Right? And so it went from being this thing that I totally forgot about to this thing I totally cherish. Cause I get to see it every single day and my kid looks at it and she's like, you know, she names like Chewbacca and Boba Fett and Yoda and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, it's I'm so great. happy your daughter knows who knows who Boba Fett is. I know. It's great. Um, I have a next? stupid. I have a stupid little thing. This is great. This is a. Uh, let's see. Hold on. There's a. There's a piece of it that's missing. Hold on. I'll be right back. I'll be. I'm. I'm just going over here for a spell. I'll be right back. We're okay. We're doing well. I'm gonna do some pan and scans of my bad Star Wars drawings in the meantime. There we go. I'm back. That's me. Hey. Uh, how's it going? All right. Cool. Um. So I grabbed this model kit of Eevee a while ago. This is a Pokemon model kit. Um, it's just like a little snap together thing. It's basically like a Gundam kit for babies. Uh-huh. And I uh, painted it to look like my dog. <laughs> it was like a little Pomeranian. Um, and I'm just very happy oh, with it. I finished amazing. that last night. Yeah. How did you, just, so how did you, did you airbrush each individual piece? I did. Yeah. I wanted my, I, my wife wanted to learn how to airbrush and I was like, all right, let's do it. And so we just broke all the pieces apart and like, you know, put them on little, you know, paint skewers and stuff and finally painted it. And then, um, then she got bronchitis and didn't want to be around aerosol fumes for a while. So I just finished it myself last night. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It's, it's nice to have hobbies. Gotta have hobbies in 2020. (laughs) It's a good time. Um, yeah, Max, you held up your spawn number one before. This is this is my first spawn. Oh, there's that joke again. <laughs> hey, Leah. Can you say hey, hi, sweetie. Max? Can you say hi. bye-bye to everybody? Say bye-bye. She's very camera shy. That's probably for the best. I mean, yeah. You God forbid she end up like us. I know, that'd be a bad look. Well, anyway, that was Up at Noon Live. We're I keep making this show for you guys. Uh, we're very honored to be here. Uh, and thank you so much for tuning in in these weird, strange times uh, because uh, this is this is really what we have left, you know? And so let's make the best of it. Um, thanks for watching our stupid show. We'll be back in a week from now. In the meantime, if you want more of us, uh, Max and I do podcasts beyond every single week uh, where we talk about PlayStation. And I'm also on our Nintendo show every week. And uh, Max, you're doing a cool thing next week uh for a star wars movie yeah is that official did we officially announce that yeah we did okay yes, we did. um we are doing a there's a watch from home theater it is wednesday night at 5 or 5 30 p.m pacific time but basically i'm assuming most people have access to either disney plus where rogue one is streaming or a blu-ray or dvd of rogue one or <laughs> if you like rogue one you probably have it i'm guessing um but we're going to be watching rogue one with uh the writers and asking them all sorts of questions like about Saw Gerrera's foot, why it got messed <laughs> up, and I have all I, how they got you know Doctor Evazon and Ponda Baba in there, and about the hallway scene. It's going to be very exciting, and I'm super stoked to do that. So tune in for that. Um, again, we'll have like sort of a countdown thing. We'll help you get every, everything synced up, and because it's all streaming over the internet, inevitably something will probably go wrong, and we'll work through it together. You never know; it could happen. Um, but yeah, until then, uh, check out IGN. Uh, check out our made a ton of this week um and they're all up there right now so catch up on our shows catch up on our short films and our conversations and all that fun stuff um and for everything else you're already in the right place ign as they say uh oh, wait wait, and, wait, wait. Uh, oh, we have the, the other thing we do we have that thing we do on the side we got a little, little podcast called the comedy button you might have heard of it it's uh we've been doing it for a very long time it's just a it's just us goofing around with some friends so go check that out it's audio only it's very yeah. low budget Sometimes it's terrible, but uh, it's and if, more of this. If you're in the, if you're in the comments, uh, give a big uh, thank you to Alexio, who uh, produces the show. He puts in tons of work at IGN, one of my favorite people on earth. He has been consistently one of the best people to work with, especially since you know the, the walls of the universe have been torn down or, uh, I would say, put up. Um, he, uh, he is the glue that holds us all together. So thank you to Alexio for producing the show, for, uh, coming in hot every single week when our microphones and cameras are all busted up and, you know, it's just diarrhea of technology constantly. Thank you for, for being who you are. Um, we'll be back in a week. There he is. We'll be back in a week and, uh, we love you guys so much and thank you so much for watching and, uh, have a great weekend. Like, honestly, yeah, seriously, I don't know, but what are are we going to do? I guess we're going to do.
this, but not look at email or something. I don't, whatever. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's the same stuff, but less email, which is cool. Uh, well, I'm glad we got to hang out and talk about like spawn and animal crossing. Like we do. Yeah. Me too. Talk about South park and uh, the uh, boobs. I think the boobs was- anime. Great. Yeah. Good job. All right. Good stuff. Have a great, great weekend, work. everybody. We'll be back in yeah. a week or sooner, Good whichever. Well, or the morning where how, get out of here. Go away. Eddie B in the chat just says, how does IGN make money? Great question. <laughs> <laughs>